Uh, good evening. My name is Terrence Carroll, and I'm chair of the King County Districting Committee. Uh, this is June 29, 2011, and this is a public hearing of the committee. What I'd like to do is give you a little bit of background about the committee, and then we'll hear from our GIS expert. That'll take a few minutes, and then we'll uh, hear from you, which is the reason why we're here uh, tonight. Most of you may know that the law requires us to redraw the King County Council districts every 10 years based on a census that's done in our country. There was a census done in 2000 and there are district maps behind me that show the districts that were drawn. Keep in mind that about seven or eight years ago, the King County, by public, King County Council by public vote was reduced from 13 to nine members. So that occurred around 2003 and four, but the 2000 data, census data were used to draw the lines that you see behind me. Now with the 2010 census, we are required by law, and this is the committee that has that obligation, to redraw the lines to meet the, uh, any changes in data that have occurred. You might be interested to know that King County grew 11.2% in population since uh, uh, the year 2000. For example, the city of Seattle grew by 8%. Other parts of the county grew considerably more or less. There's a district in Northeast um, uh, King County here that grew by 27%. So all of that means that the districts that you see behind need an adjustment uh, depending on their increase because the law requires us, and I'll get into that in a moment, the law requires us to draw the lines uh, as evenly and contiguous as possible. The, uh, the King County District and Committee, it should be noted, is different than there is a statewide uh, district and committee that's looking at legislative and congressional districts. That's not us, that's another district. Uh, we are an independent volunteer group. Uh, you can see by our name tags. On my right is Rod Dimbowski, uh, a colleague, Sally Nelson, another colleague, and John Jensen. Sally Poliak is on her way, and we've been in phone contact with her. She's been stuck in some traffic, and she'll be here momentarily. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that our job, which is to redraw the maps if we think it's necessary, is based on the evolution of what has occurred in America. And just real briefly, there was, as you may know, a, a long time ago, a famous Supreme Court decision called Baker, Baker versus Carr, one person, one vote. There was the Voting Rights Act of 1964, I believe, and subsequent legislation. Since then, there's been a real evolution in the way in which districts are drawn, uh, whether it's legislative, county council, congressional, or something else. And right now, as we sit here, we have an evolution of the law. The state governments have gotten into it. The courts on occasion get into it. And even the county charter dictates some of the principles that should guide us. These are general principles, but they do are, are things that uh, myself and my colleagues are well aware of. And that is that we are to create districts that are as much as practical, compact, contiguous, and composed of economic and geographic units. Uh, population data may not be used for purposes of favoring or disfavoring any racial group or political party. We are also required to consider other factors, including city boundaries, natural features, and communities of interest. Before we got to the point where we are tonight, which is four maps with the help of our expert that we developed, we had a series of public meetings throughout uh, the county. We also had our own public meetings of the committee where we looked at uh, the materials that we were assembling. And each of the plans here tonight is an effort to take perhaps not a major but, a, but significant differences in terms of how to, how to look at the, uh, the, uh, the nine districts that we have to uh, form here. And we want to hear from the public about their reaction to these plans and tonight is one of those meetings where we're going to be holding several meetings over the next few, uh, few weeks. Keep in mind that King County is the size of 14 of our states. We have 39 different municipalities. There's a lot of territory and lines have to be drawn somewhere, which I've reminded my colleagues on occasion, and that's our job to do. Um, and uh, we will do it and we're in the process of proposing four that we really welcome input on. We have to and are required by law to come up with a final plan by January 12th of 2012. We intend to do much better than that and have a plan sometime in the early fall. 
after we decide on a plan, we'll then have another public hearing and either decide to make changes or not. And then it is, uh, under the law, it becomes the plan for the districts. You can also, if you wish to make input, either after tonight or in any other way, visit our website. And many people do comment via the website. And if you don't have that web address, it's kingcounty.gov slash districting. Real basic, kingcounty.gov slash districting. What I'd like to do now is turn the um, uh, comment period over to our GIS expert, John Slosher. And he is the person that we have turned to to help us uh, develop these four proposals. And I think it would be helpful for him to talk, but I know I've neglected something. I was going to do that, yeah. And the uh, person who just reminded me is Simon Ferretta, who is our staff person, and um, reminded me that um, in addition to thanking the city of Shoreline for the use of this facility, the mayor is here, Keith McGlashan, and I told him, where are you, Keith? I'm, I'm in the back. And I want him to, he indicated that he would like to make a couple comments to us, and before John, excuse me for that, before getting to your comments, we want to hear from the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chair Carroll and committee members, I wanted to be here to just say thank you for choosing Shoreline as your location in North King County to come and do your hearing. We're very proud of our city and our county and our building, and we will be proud of Aurora one day too when it's done. So, uh, But thank you for coming, and thank you for the work you do. Uh, I, know, I know it's very hard work. I'm sure you've, you're hearing from a lot of people, and we, we at the City of Shoreline appreciate all the efforts you're putting into it. So thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mayor. It's a beautiful facility, okay. and we really I did appreciate. It all myself. <laughs> <laughs> we also have, and I want to recognize, we have some other public officials here who are uh, both from Shoreline and the surrounding communities. Robert Lee is a council member from Lake Forest Park. Robert, where are you? Thank you for being here. And Will Hall is the deputy mayor. Will, there you are. And Don, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I would say Feeney. Yes, is uh, also a Lake Forest Park Council Member Don. Thank you for your uh, appearance here tonight. So let's get back to John. And keep in mind, we have four proposals in front of you. And John's going to talk a little bit about how those four evolved and how they may differ or be alike as well. So go ahead, John. Thank you, Chair Carroll. So we have four draft maps, as um, Judge Carroll mentioned. And I want to highlight some differences between and among them as well as contrast them to the council boundaries as they now stand. So what we're seeing on the screen above us is uh, the current 2005 council district boundaries. And uh, overlaid on them are some text references to the amount of change that needs to happen to cause them to fall within the, the balancing confines, uh, which is, of course, one of the goals for the whole districting process. The balancing of population is not the only goal but certainly one of the principal ones. <clears throat> so I want to point out a couple of highlights of the existing, um, existing set of boundaries, and then we'll go directly to each of the four in turn, each of the four draft maps in turn. One of the big distinctives is that on the east side, clearly the two districts, uh, three and nine, are the ones that have to shrink the most. So as we see the drafts, you'll see each of them uh, basically take some of the, the territory that's been in District 3 or District 9 and uh, absorb it into another district. Uh, growth has just been faster in that part of the county, the east side of the county. <clears throat> uh, nearly every district is expanding, so there will be some changes. But I think as you go through the drafts with me, you'll see that there hasn't been change for, the, for change's sake. There have been changes along the edges. And really, uh, if we could line these up on top of each other, which we might before this story's over, uh, we would see that uh, the changes are not huge in distance terms. Um, let me point out some areas where we will see changes, just highlights of what's coming. And then as we go through each of them in turn, you can look for whether that applies to this particular draft. So one of the things that we'll see in one of the drafts is that Mercer Island might become part of District 2 has traditionally been part of District 6 on the east side. Uh, up here in the north end, uh, where the North Shore cities uh, align themselves along the border with Snohomish County, this border between District uh, 
three and district one uh, shifts back and forth a bit in different drafts. Uh, district one's border in a couple of them shifts pretty substantially <clears throat> uh, as it relates to district four and district two. And then down here in the south, um, some really significant uh, changes with respect to the what you might think of as the airport cities. Um, the another area to keep in mind is to see what's happening down here in Renton, with an area that's not part of the incorporation incorporated city limits of Renton or the city of Seattle, but has heretofore been split between District Two and uh, District Five. Okay, enough of a preamble. We had uh, we have some. Plots out front, some big uh, expansions, and I think some of you may have picked up the graphics that uh, uh, Simon Ferretta so kindly set out for everyone. Let's look at some of these in detail. I'll start with draft one, and there's no, uh, no magic to the numbers of the drafts. They're just uh, arbitrary numbers. <clears throat> okay, highlights of district one compared to what we've got now and also compared to some of the other drafts that are coming. Uh, well, let's start with Shoreline. Uh, you'll see in this draft, District 4, which, uh, and if there, that's what the green line is here that shows the existing boundary. District 4 shifts north to the county line and eastward slightly uh, to uh, I-5. That's a su significant change, isn't it? Not all the drafts do that. <clears throat> um, district, uh, this draft number one also down here in the Issaquah area, um, causes half of Issaquah to move into District 9. Heretofore, Issaquah has been in 3, hasn't it, in District 3. Um, the, uh, once you start moving this bubble around, it's not as uh, easy as it might sound to keep it all balanced. You move it in one place and everything else gets affected, doesn't it? So one of the consequences for this draft of moving the line for District 4 up to the county line is that uh, District 4 gives up some population down here uh, in the south for where downtown Seattle is. That downtown Seattle area moves into District 8. District 2 expands southward. It has to grow some, so it has to expand somewhere. And uh, it gives up some of its northern territory, and if you'll see what I'm pointing to on the screen, you can see it extends southward to and including uh, pretty much half of Renton, the northern half of Renton. So it's a pretty good share of the South uh, Lake Washington shoreline area. I've only got a limited amount of time to go through this, so I'm going to shift quickly to the next draft. There's we'll go to draft map number two. <clears throat> Start with Shoreline again, it's the least I can do, given the nice facility. Shoreline, uh, is, the lines around Shoreline are pretty much the same as the current district map. Not much change there for Shoreline. But there is a lot of change in the center of the map. This is the, the draft plan that shows uh, Mercer Island becoming part of District 2. Not uh, the Bellevue District, but now uh, the district that encompasses a good share of the city of Seattle. Also some change down in the south by SeaTac Airport. District 8 is uh, expanding southward. Includes uh, quite a bit more of SeaTac. And um, in the Renton area, um, we see uh, the District 5, which has had a lot of Renton in the past. Now it's expanding uh, up to the city limits of Seattle to encompass that uh, Skyway West Hill annexation area. Again, that's not part of any incorporated area. In the current map, it's split pretty much between District 2 and District 5. In this draft, it's fully within District 5. District 9 takes uh, the entire, excuse me, District 6 has a big change with respect to Issaquah. Issaquah is now fully within District 6. not the way it is now. Okay, uh, moving on to the next draft. We have a third draft of four. <clears throat> In the shoreline area, this uh, makes a change much like what we saw with the first draft, doesn't it? 
where District 4 expands to the north all the way to the county line and uh, continues to follow in a north-south uh, axis, follow the main transportation corridors. Uh, District 1 expands a little bit south toward the Ship Canal, but not all the way. And District 2 expands to get that south uh, chunk of unincorporated area, the West Hill skyline unincorporated or potential annexation area. Uh, Bellevue is split here between District 6 and District 9, uh, so there's a little bit of a change there. Um, and then there's quite a bit of change over here. It doesn't look like so much in terms of square miles. Some of these changes are small in area, but there are a lot of people involved. And this area here between District 6 and District uh, 3, where uh, in the Redmond area, uh, it's small change in miles maybe, but a large change in people. don't want to forget the South County. There may be people who have driven up from South County at this meeting. So in this case, for this draft, District 9 is shifting to the west. It's taking quite a bit more of Kent and follows the Kent Black Diamond Road as a you know, pretty significant and well understood boundary uh, now proposed as a boundary between District 9 and District 7. So again, the key features of this one are the shift of uh, <clears throat> you know, the expansion of District 4 to the north and uh, a bunch of other uh, notes along the side, probably more than we have time to cover. We move to the fourth map, fourth draft map, and these are all drafts. I'm not sure there's any, uh, certainly no expectation on the part of anyone that this is a vote and the, the public has to pick or the committee has to pick a single draft. This is a step toward a draft. Each one of these four is a step toward an ultimate uh, decision about a single draft. Okay, we're in the fourth of the, the four drafts. Uh, in the District 1 area, including Shoreline, it's very much like things are now with one major exception, that is this di first district must expand and the Companion District 3 must uh, give up some territory. So in this draft, District 1 is expanded to the east. All the North Shore cities uh, are, would be on, in District 1 under this scenario. Uh, it's a little bit subtle because the distance involved is small, but in this draft, District 2 uh, expands. It's a little bit, expands in an east-west direction. Instead of being uh, a portion of Capitol Hill, a portion of, of uh, Beacon Hill, just the, instead of being just the eastern portion, it's expanded to encompass in, entirely uh, all of Capitol Hill and essentially all of Beacon Hill and Point South. Uh, at this annexation area zone here between Renton again and the city of Seattle, this draft gives that area to Renton. Renton being split approximately 50-50 between uh, you know, District 9 and District 5. Uh, not a lot of change uh, further south. Uh, I think most of the maps, including this draft, uh, pretty much follow the southern boundary of Kent. Uh, this area in the southeast corner of Kent is another one of those high density areas with small area but high population per square mile. Uh, and it's become a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a fulcrum point for the three districts that come together there. Uh, one final comment on this one, and then I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up. Uh, District 3 here uh, continues to include uh, all of, of Issaquah. Uh, the um, um, city of Seattle continues to be, uh, the downtown area of the city of Seattle continues to be pretty much uh, in District 4. And, um, the um, um, District 6 border with District uh, 3 shows some change up here in the Redmond area. Again, Redmond then being represented uh, the north and uh, east corner of Redmond by one council member and uh, the other half of Redmond by another. 
Okay, so we've seen several zones of which uh, seem to be in play. One is this uh, east-west or north-south boundary uh, to the eastern section of the North Shore cities. Certainly this boundary between District 4 and District 1, we've got two maps doing it one way, two maps doing it another, um, and uh, the role of uh, Mercer Island and whether it will join uh, District 2 or perhaps retain its role as part of District 6. Those are big, big decisions. I think all the drafts have tried to handle the, the uh, potential annexation area between Renton and the City of Seattle. That's been a split zone in the past. All of them are trying to at least keep it together. Uh, the, uh, in hearing the committee's deliberations, there's been consistent talk about uh, trying to keep cities such as these uh, eastern valley cities like uh, North Bend, Snoqualmie, Carnation, Duval, cities like that that tend to have a lot in common. There's been a lot of attention given to trying to at least address that. Similarly, there are cities down here in the south and east along the Black Diamond, uh, Covington, Maple Valley corridor where there's been attention, trying to, attention given trying to keep people together. So it's, it's really a nice set of alternatives. A lot of differences here and uh, looking forward to your comments. Okay, thank you for that, uh, John. And uh, there may be a question or two of John, and I, I would want to uh, remind those of you who have taken the time to attend tonight that on the back of the handouts that we gave you are some profile information about the cities in each of the districts, and also, not unimportantly for county government, the unincorporated areas that each of the districts also involve from a population standpoint. I think sometimes it's helpful to have that information uh, as well. And uh, John, you, you said something interesting that I think we talked about in the beginning, and that is that some of the districts increased in population more than others, and there has to be a balance by law. And notice in the various plans, you have a population that's roughly, give or take, 214,000 per district. It, by law, it doesn't have to be exact, but it's got to, there has to be some nearness to that number. The latest, uh, or the, the, re the district lines that currently exist, John, I think the population per district averages closer to 202,000. So you can see the growth that's occurred that's got to spread across these nine districts. So the districts that have grown a lot more actually have to lose population, and a lot of people don't always understand that that's part of redistricting as well when you're dealing with a confined area as we are with King County. Uh, and I think it would be appropriate if any of you, under our protocols that we've established, have at least in the beginning any questions of John Slosher. This is, we would welcome them if you do. Yes, council member, why don't you, could you step over here? These are actually proceedings that are being recorded, so I think it would be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John, my, my question would be, um, you're kind of showing the cities by color blobs, and I was just curious whether it reflects the recent annexation that uh, Ken, or that uh, Kirkland has gone through. Yes, it does. The um, area up by uh, to the north it does the yellow swatch on the map is inclusive of that annexation. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And I think it would be helpful for each person to identify themselves. Yeah, my name is Samson B. <clears throat> and I came to Shoreline here in 1993. And I look at the redistricting draft four. It appears that uh, the presenter did a very good job. And it's amazing how he came out. And I see that District 1 is the only one that having a 213. And District 3 has 215, 460. Is there any way you can adjust it so that it becomes fair that we will get 14, 214? Uh, certainly that's a goal, to try and tweak these numbers to be closer. And there are some other goals, too, that in the final phases I think the committee will want to do. For example, there's uh, it's helpful both for county operations and because of the the mandate to the committee, it's helpful to follow existing precinct boundaries. So that will be a kind of a change that once the, the broad outlines are figured out that I think the committee will want to make. 
And I, I expect these population numbers to become more balanced in the final draft, although as I understand the legalities, and I'll defer to others on this, it's not a requirement. Okay, yeah. thank you. My yeah. second uh, question is, are we going to maintain all the cities within the district? There are definitely cities that are split between two districts, if that's your question. So um, people have different opinions about that, but um, uh, the, the charge the committee has to do with maintaining commu uh, communities of mutual interest, of uh, which being in the same city, that, that is one. But there are also goals, and so the committee has to balance many factors. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for a nice job. <laughs> right. Thank you for your questions. Anyone else? All right, and as I mentioned, with 39 cities, we, you can't always accommodate the municipal boundaries. And cities vary in their, at least, input in terms of whether they want to be within one or more districts. So uh, there's a lot of different opinions out there. You know, I, I also want to recognize, because they took the time to be here, there are some other public officials who are here as well, and I want, would like to recognize them, as I did with the earlier uh, representatives that we have here. Uh, it's my understanding that Luis Moscoso, who's a state representative from the first legislative district, is here. There you are, sir. Thank you for attending. We also have uh, Sherry Winstead, who's on the City Council of Shoreline. Ms. Winstead, there you are. All right. Thank you. And Cindy Ryan, who's a state representative, is here as well. Where are you? Thank you very much. Okay. You know, um, I don't know if my colleagues have any questions at this point of John. Certainly you can. I know Sally is still stuck in traffic. <laughs> I'm going to take a, the chair's option here and think she would want us to proceed. So yeah. we're, going to, uh, we're going to go ahead with uh, really the main purpose, which is to hear from you. And we do have a, a sign-up list here. Um, and, um, you know, just, just so you know, given the number of people who want to talk to us, um, we are going to have to... Uh, indicate that you're going to be limited and uh, as an individual you're going to be limited to three minutes if you can uh, just like in school you hear a bell go off so please try to honor it nobody's going to automatically cut you off but I think it would be as most helpful to try to be as concise uh, as you can with your comments knowing that everything is appreciated because as you can tell this is a pretty significant task that we do need your help and advice on. Um, the first person uh, to sign up here to talk to us is Jonathan Fox. Jonathan Fox, are you here? There you are. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Yeah, good evening, Commissioner, or Committee. Um, my name is Jonathan Fox. I'm the Vice President of the Friends of Renton Libraries, and I'm also the Chairman of the only organization in the 37th district that includes people from Seattle, unincorporated King County, and Renton. Now, just like to reference you to the proposed District 2 in the, the draft number one, that, which consists of a large portion of Seattle which, and the northern half of Renton, that's roughly about what the 37th district is. Now the population listed at mo even if we if we assume annexation is 70% Seattle, 30% Renton. In reality, this is going to mean 100% Seattle and 0% Renton. That's just the way it's going to work. And it's the way it works in the 37th. It's going to be the way it's going to work in the in the second. And I proposed it district map 2. Uh, it's much better, and and proposed district map three and four are also very good. The only question I want to put to you is: you're not going to move Mercer Island. I've been here long enough. I know they're going to yell, they're going to scream. It's not going to happen. So, <laughs> so I know. So, so just remember, if you're going to. Don't remember, please remember, if you do a 30, a 70, 30 district, Seattle, Renton, is going to be, the re reality is going to be 100% Seattle, 0% Renton. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for those comments. And um, um, 
you know, we really appreciate your, your observations. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Fox, you step back? When you say 70, 30, part of Seattle and 30, yeah. and That's 70 part of Seattle and 30 part of the unincorporated and yeah. then, do you mean that the representative who represents that district were more, in a high degree of probability come from the Seattle, well, in terms well, of residents? Well, 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 it's not a question of necessarily come from Se Seattle, but it's a question of time. Okay. They're going to necessarily put their time in, in Seattle, and no, no doubt when it comes to identifications in public forums and newspapers, it's always going to be a member from Seattle. Okay. And I know from my experience in the 37th, which is roughly about the second, yes. any t even though it's Seattle, unincorporated, Renton, and Tukwila, we don't get any re any input from them concerning Renton, and and it's almost impossible to organize anything in the 37th. And I can just give you an example of a parade that I'm organized. It's been almost impossible. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay, the next person um, uh, who signed up here <coughs> is, uh, is it Ken? Um, it looks like no, no, no Reiko, but I'm not sure of that. Is that right? I think it's, I think okay, I think it's, all right, sir, if you're ready to talk with us. And again, identify yourself. Make sure. I sure. The, I'm the Ken Noreen. Ken Noreen. Noreen. I'm long sorry. time resident right. of Shoreline. There you are. Thank you. I would uh, encourage the committee to look stronger at not dividing Shoreline in the, that means either two or four. I think we, uh, being a newer city, so to speak, need the cohesiveness and our friends in Lake Forest Park to be with us. Um, and some of the same comments that you had about the 37th, I think it's very important that our control of us is in the north end, and that representative that's gonna represent would have the north end and the, and the cities in the North Shore area. But I think we have much in common, school districts in common, even though we have part of Seattle. But we encourage you to uh, stay with us as a total city and want either two or four. Thank you, Mr. Noreen. Apologize for m misreading on the. My hand right. <laughs> All right. Will Hall has all signed up, has also signed up here to, already been introduced as a deputy mayor, but also wants to talk to us, right? Yes. Thank you, okay. Chair Carroll, members of the committee. My name is Will Hall, 832 Northwest 193rd in Shoreline, and I'm speaking only on my individual behalf tonight. Okay. I appreciate your time uh, and know how hard it is to try and balance the interests of a number of people you hear from and your staff are doing a great job to support you. I'd like to echo the comments of Mr. Noreen before me and encourage you to keep uh, the Shoreline community whole and keep us together with the other North End cities. Um, it's a community that has been growing together, learning together, working to build connections between some historical differences between the east and west side of the city and I think it would be a tragedy to think that uh, the mere presence of I-5 is something that would divide it into two communities. The communities share a very common interest. Uh, there are new bicycle trails and other connections being built between them. Uh, community efforts on sustainability, which is a very important uh, principle for the entire community from Puget Sound all the way uh, to our border with Lake Forest Park. Uh, the name of the city of Shoreline. Shoreline was from the shore to the shore and the line to the line. Um, it's one community. We identify as one community and we would appreciate your respecting that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, uh, Mr. Hall. Okay, um, Jean Thomas has also signed up to talk to us. Ms. Thomas. Jean Thomas, a resident of Lake Forest Park, and I thank you for the opportunity to provide feedback. The North Shore cities certainly have commonality of interest. 
but especially with regard to Lake Forest Park and Shoreline, we're more than neighboring cities. We share a school district uh, as a very small uh, residential community with negligible commercial revenue. Uh, we contract for some of our services from Shoreline. Uh, in the 32nd Legislative District, we work together on many issues uh, that are common to us both. And frankly, a lot of the residents of Lake Forest Park are concerned because we have no commercial revenue and none foreseeable in, in the future, in the near future, that there is the possibility, um, perhaps not too uh, soon, but uh, there is a possibility that the cities at one point will be merged. We, we share a lot and I think it would be a disservice not only to Shoreline to take it out of the first district, but it would very definitely be a, a disservice to the city uh, and the residents of Lake Forest Park. Uh, the 32nd Legislative District Democrats have looked at all of your uh, drafts. Uh, we prefer draft two. Uh, draft four is acceptable. But one and three dividing us unnecessarily as we feel we, we are strongly opposed to. And I thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your thoughtful comments uh, as well. You know, in terms of looking at this list, in, th term, in those of you who wish to testify, we have uh, all those who wish. And there might be some people who came in late and who either did not sign up or know that they have to, or having listened, would prefer to have signed up. Mm -hmm. and, and really, we are certainly able to accommodate any of you who have not signed up to testify who would like to do so. Please step forward if you'd like to. Yes, sir. Our council member again. Mr. Finey. I'm um, Don Finney. I'm a council member in the city of Lake Forest Park. I also co-chair the Seashore Transportation Forum uh, the remarks that I'm about to make are my own personal marks and do not reflect the collective wisdom of those two bodies. I was hopeful, um, as I learned of this process, that it would end up with the North End cities uh, in some way being kept together. And I'm pretty pleased to see uh, in your proposals that, that basically that's accomplished to some degree or another, with the exception, I believe, of uh, draft number two. So I'm really pleased that we're comfortably in the middle, uh, but I think it is important, particularly uh, from what I've learned and seen in working with the Seashore Transportation Forum and some of the other regional forums that I uh, am involved in, uh, that there is a lot of merit to, to keeping uh, the North End cities together. Whether or not uh, the city of Shoreline or the city of Woodenville uh, wants to be totally included or bifurcated, I think that's really an issue for those two councils to address. But uh, I, I certainly like the three proposals that do keep, uh, to some degree, uh, all of the North End cities, uh, in a sense, together. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Finney. Yes, Representative Ryan, is that right? Cindy Ryu, representing the cities of Shoreline, Lake Forest Park, Kenmore, uh, now Kirkland, as well as Woodway and part of Edmonds. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And um, I actually also served on Seashore Transportation Forum with Council Member Feeney for four years. And it was great training ground if anybody wants to do that. Um, I have a little bit different take from the co good council member. Uh, options, uh, drafts one and three are pro problematic for city of Shoreline because it does divide the city into east and west. Option, uh, drafts two and four obviously keeps city of Shoreline together. I think I prefer option uh, two. Um, over four, it does maintain similar lines as what we have right now, and we actually do work very well together as cities within the first district, and I would definitely uh, strongly urge you to consider uh, the draft number two as far as the north end cities are concerned. Thank you very much for your uh, time. Representative, thank you as well. 
We have another gentleman who uh, I can tell stepping to the mic. may not be gentleman, but well, okay. And uh, my name is Jim Adams. I live in Lake Forest Park. I was a uh, I'd moved there ten years ago from Kenmore, so I have friends on both sides. But I looked these over in real fast. But uh, I'm just <coughs> repeating what I've heard so far. Number two is the one I want. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. And I note that um, uh, several moments ago, our colleague Sally Poliak joined us. Glad that you could fight through the traffic to get here. Thank you. Yes, sir. Just identify yourself, and we're glad to hear from you. My name is A.D. Knox. I live in Seattle. I'll go by Skip. And I may be, uh, since I arrived late to school, missed the assignment. Are you only talking about congressional districts this evening? We're talking about King County Council Districts. Excuse me, yes. Yes, yes okay, thank that's you. that's all we're talking Will about. Will you be dealing with, at any point in your deliberations during the, your terms, uh, with uh, school district boundaries? No, we, we're, we're not. Uh, <laughs> if the question is, are we drawing those boundaries, obviously not. Uh, that information is available to us and is part of uh, what we've learned but it isn't part of our assignment. Right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else who would like to, yes, sir, and identify yourself, please. Hi, I'm Noel Rengley. Um, I'm a resident of District uh, 4 in Seattle, and in all four of your proposed maps, I will still be. Um, I th would like to echo what I am sensing to be a majority of the people attending here, where map four, proposed map four, would be acceptable to us in Northern County. Map number two would be far more preferred. Um, and I, and I you know, appreciate that the committee, I believe, has taken to the, to the greatest degree practical to link or to keep um, communities that share commonalities together. And we, I believe map two you know, does that to the greatest degree. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to talk with us? All right. Well, thanks again for coming out on an evening like this to talk to us. I hope we've been able to give you some information and background as well about our assignment. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, is it three more meetings scheduled as well in different parts of the county, as you might well expect, coming up in the next... Uh, <laughs> in the next few weeks and then we'll produce a plan that we'll have another public hearing on and I'm sure if you are wish to be part of a mailing list you could be and uh, there's also the website that I mentioned to you King uh, kingcounty.gov slash uh, districting if you're interested in either commenting or keeping up to date with our work um, do any of my colleagues have anything further that they'd like to add at our public meeting here tonight Mr. Chair, I might have a, just a question to our shoreline uh, representatives. We've heard from some city councils who have adopted resolutions, including the city of Woodenville, that they preferred, and I think, Mr. Chair, you made a reference to this, they preferred to be represented by two council members <clears throat> on this regional government, governing body, the King County Council. And tonight we're hearing, at least the bulk of the comments seem to say, uh, don't split shoreline. We want to have one uh, and a modification of that, keep the North Shore cities together. So I, I wondered if any of if the mayor or any of the council members might want to comment a little bit more on how you as cities interact with King County, the regional government, governing body. I understand that they provide the sheriff's service on a contract basis and um, things like that. But is was consideration given to an advantage, perhaps, of being represented by two members? Or and if you could expand on that, it'd be yeah, helpful yeah, for I think me. We have the mayor to answer yeah. that timely Here question. We go. <laughs> Keith McGrossin, Mayor of the City of Shoreline. Thank you for your question. Um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what I heard about um, contracting services from Shoreline. The only thing I can come to in mind would be the Shoreline Water District uh, goes into part of Lake Forest Park. The, the nor North King County cities are rather connected. We do a North End Mayor's Meeting every month. Uh, and the seashore, seashore Transportation Forum includes members from those cities. Uh, and as far as the council goes w about decision on preferred maps, we have not had that discussion yet. Your maps just came out Friday. They'll be set up and we'll be discussing that in, a, uh, in future meetings, study session and then meetings. And then I'm sure you'll be hearing from somebody on the city council, but yeah. we haven't, as a, as a body, we have not decided on which scenario we would like to look at yet.
Does that help answer any questions? That does. Thank you. Okay, I, and I don't know of any other services that we that Lake Forest Park contracts from us, but uh, okay. if somebody from Lake Forest Park can tell us more about that, other yeah. you know, school districts, with the Shoreline School District does go into Shoreline and Lake Forest Park. And I guess, Mr. Mayor, my question also touched on how the city of Shoreline interacts with King County. I, you know, in terms of your you contract, I think for your police service, we don't can contract our police services yes, through and King I County. You have some and Lake Forest Park has their own. Mm -hmm. Some interaction with the wastewater services division because you have outfall over. That's true. Near yeah. Point we have uh, on the west side of Shoreline. We have the also um, Shoreline Water. I'm sorry, Seattle SPU Seattle Water. And Seattle City Light is in, in Shoreline. Does that help? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I see people walking, and I can't always tell if they're walking toward the <laughs> mic or visiting. Either of which is acceptable. But uh, there's a council member. Uh, okay. Representative Ryun it wants to. Yes, also I'm double dipping. Sorry about that, Cindy Ryu. I um, I think uh, Jean Thomas from Lake Forest Park also mentioned it, but I'm part of the 32nd District Democrats, and we do have an official position that we do want to stay together, especially uh, Lake Forest Park and Shoreline. Um, as far as I know from my past experience as mayor of Shoreline and council member of Shoreline, uh, besides the school district because of the many um, other joint services that we provide or at least work together with uh, and besides the seashore transportation forum such as the senior center recreations um, I think we also do animal control together I think it's very important for us to stay together thank you very much for letting me double dip we have a council member also I believe Lake, Lake Forest Park Yes. yes, I'm Robert Lee, uh, right. Council Member Lake Forest Park. Um, as a Council Member from Lake Forest Park, I'm also Chair of the Suburban Cities Association um, King County Flood Control District. And while that represents all of King County and uh, a very f a fair share of uh, looking at all projects throughout the county, um, I'm much concerned as well with the uh, watersheds of the North Shore and how they affect Lake Forest Park and uh, our shared watersheds with other communities adjoining us. So uh, your proposals two and four would keep the North Shore cities together and pretty much the watersheds intact. Um, also in MISMAC, which is the Metropolitan Solid Waste Committee, and uh, that is involved right now in uh, redistricting or decisions on uh, the future of solid waste. And, um, and again, that affects all of King County, but keeping the, the cities, North Shore cities together it would be a plus. Um, shortly, I'll, I'll be on the um, policy, transportation policy board of PSRC. So uh, I would expect even more interaction and uh, continuity for the cities there. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, in relation to your question about relationship with the county, I thought I should speak up. My name is Edie Lawyer Nelson. I'm a resident of Shoreline. I serve on the oversight or the um, the Human Services Oversight Board for the King County Veterans and Human Services Levy. And a, as rep a representative of the North End, I represent people all, from all of the North End cities, uh, particularly from the North Urban Human Service Alliance, NUCHA as we call it. And I attend their meetings regularly, hear their thoughts, and I try to represent those on the, on the King County Levy Oversight Board. So we do have a relationship that way too from the North End cities. Hope we stay together. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, Council Member Vinny. Don Finney, Council Member of the City of Lake Forest Park. <clears throat> Lake Forest Park has its own police department and its own court uh, system. We do uh, have a small contract with the City of Shoreline that provides some recreation services that, uh, for our citizens that uh, we don't have in, in uh, Lake Forest Park. 
Uh, we also contract with the city of Kenmore. Our public works department provides the manpower to uh, address their issues. So we have uh, a water district that's contained within Lake Forest Park that is a separate water district, and we have two other um, water purveyors uh, that's, that serve Lake Forest Park. Uh, we have our own sewer utility. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Judy Parsons, a longtime resident of Shoreline. And I can tell you over the years, we fought really hard to get human services out in North King County. We've always been the stepchild. You know, we weren't recognized. Well, we're finally getting recognized. And we are one of the larger cities that, that's on this. And if you take us and you split us in half, then our, the strength that we have as a city will be impacted. I know some of the cities are large. When you get Snohomish, you might, some of this goes into Snohomish County, Bothell does, but, but I think that you will really impact the strength that we have to address human services in the North King County area. Okay. Any other questions from my colleagues? Uh, to yeah, sure Yes, yes, John Jensen. Um, they've mentioned human services so much, and I think both Sally Nelson and I were at the Center for Human Services dinner, and I recognize a lot of faces out there from that, Mr. Hall and Mr. Noreen and, and, and you also. Um, what I'm curious about, since you're, you guys are able to articulate this, no, no resistance at all to this idea that Shoreline does not need to be split up or that you don't want that, but I am trying to understand what does it mean when uh, you have a city that is divided by a county council district, which in that case you're in an incorporated city and it's pro the county is providing regional governance. So what's the detriment or what is the benefit of being within the same council district? Personally, I think that we could end up with two Seattle representatives. Both of you have taken half of us and put us into Seattle. Seattle's huge. It absorbs small pieces of, uh, you know, whether, whatever you put in there that's going to be small. It's going to absorb it. There's just no way that we are going to be the primary concern of, of a person that probably might not even live in Shoreline represent us. That's my Thank thoughts. You. Any other comments on that uh, question from Mr. Jensen? All right. Yes, sir. <coughs> When I came here first, I didn't get the picture. And I was, as they are speaking, I get the real picture. I'm from Africa, and we all know the scramble for Africa and the African demarcation. When most of the Af Africa countries were divided into countries, it looked like map one. It created a lot of conflict, and we see a lot of conflict in Africa because of it's splitting a city into two. So when I look at and through the explanation, the perfect one I look is two. It won't create any problem for the cities. And if we divide before we can get actual picture, it will create a lot of problem. And I don't know how they can manage to get the city to be as it is now. So if you hold uh, a district, uh, draft two, to be very, very fair, and people will be happy, and I appreciate what we've done. So I think, as explanation goes, uh, draft two is very, very good job done. So thank you. Look at Africa, how they are fighting because of demarcation. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, thank you. Anyone else comments? Any further questions from my colleagues? All right. Yes, thank Ms. you. Nelson. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you for your comments this evening. I have two observations to make. The first is that we have heard that if a city is divided in two, where there's equality in terms of the division, that you get more bang for your buck because you'll have two council members representing you. Um, and I see shaking heads. I, I'm not going to comment on whether I disagree or agree with that, but we've heard that from some people. Secondly, I want to say I think the North End cities are quite remarkable and provide a really extraordinary model for other cities in terms of their mutual cooperation, 
sharing resources. When one lacks public works, um, which is very expensive, they share it. And so I think there's a lot of merit in the benefit of, of keeping them a cohesive whole, and I appreciate all your comments. Thank you. Okay. Well, as chair, I think we're running to the end of the meeting, but I also, I know I speak on behalf of my colleagues. We learned so much. I've learned so much about governance just listening to you about your community, and I know that you understand and respect that many communities have strong feelings like you do, but I've learned a lot about how you are organized, and I think echoing what Sally Nelson just said about trying to help yourselves through, through the governance, it's, it's impressive. You know, this isn't the only time, and it was mentioned earlier, that you'll be able to comment. The mayor mentioned that our maps have just almost, uh, the ink's just barely dry, so to speak. But um, you will have other chances to comment and reflect on, and I think that these hearings will be televised. And you might be interested in what we, when we go to, I think, Des Moines, in, in, yeah, in, for one of what they'll have yeah. to say. It'll be interesting to see. But we have listened and learned a lot from you tonight and are very appreciative of your uh, input to us. But unless there's something further um, uh, that somebody wants to raise, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.